So many people actually decide to edit their own YouTube videos and you could be one of them. But a lot of people might not actually realize that they're making a ton of preventable mistakes that could lead to a decrease in views or a decrease in engagement. So in this video, I'm going to be going over these simple mistakes and how you can correct. But with that being said, we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe if you guys do enjoy. I'll see you guys on my PC. All right. So the three mistakes that I'm going to be covering, the three main mistakes that I find are the most common that I've seen in a lot of videos. All right. So the three main mistakes that I'm actually going to be covering in this video are mistakes that I see all the time in YouTube videos. I just picked the three most frequent ones that I find are the biggest. And those are actually going to be leaving in excess parts of clips. So not cutting out gaps in between talking, improper music and not having it match up with the flow of the video. And then lastly, not having something for the viewer to actually watch when your video is playing. I'm going to be explaining these in depth once I actually cover them. And with that being said, the editing software that I'm actually going to be using for this is DaVinci Resolve. It's 100% free and I use it for all of my tutorials. I'll have a download link to that in the description if you guys want to check that out. With that being said, let's fix these mistakes. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new project and we can just name it absolutely whatever we want and press create. And then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the edit tab here in DaVinci Resolve, go to file, project settings, and then change our frame rate to 60. The resolution should be fine, so you could just leave it, but just make sure it's 1920 by 1080, then we're going to press save. So the first mistake that I'm actually going to be covering is having gaps in your speech or video flow in general. So what I'm going to do to actually demonstrate this is I'm going to take a random intro from one of my videos and I'm going to show you how you can actually fix this. So as we can see here in the recording that I have, we can see that there's gaps in my speech as we go along through the video. And I feel that something a lot of people don't do is they actually don't cut these out, which can just lead to, you know, kind of a static. I'm just going to show you as an example, like a kind of just like a what's up guys. It's Josh back with another video. You wouldn't want to watch a video that's kind of having that flow. But if I were to have one that's cut up like this, what's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. It sounds a lot more engaging and it's just consistent audio for the viewer to actually pay attention to throughout the video leading to longer viewer engagement. And engagement is the number one thing on YouTube. So to fix this, we're actually going to use the blade tool in DaVinci. So to actually use this, we're just going to press B once we have anything in our timeline here. And you're just going to want to come along your video footage and cut on either side of the voice bars that you actually have just like this so we have these gaps and I'll also put one right here and then from there what you can do is you can either select the clip and press delete or what you can do to save some time you press delete and shift at the same time and it'll automatically move your clips over just like this and you can leave it like this 100% by all means but I'm going to be showing you a better way to do it so to do this we're going to disable the magnet tool we're going to drag up our clip like this and we're just going to slightly overlap these two ending syllables right here and then we're going to do the exact same thing by dragging this over right here and what this will do is it'll overlap the audio that way there's just consistent audio all the way throughout and there's zero gaps whatsoever because you might have small gaps on either side of your recordings even though you're trimming it down and i'll just quickly show you guys what this will actually sound like gaming setup your gaming setup's gonna want but that's actually the first main mistake that i notice a lot of people will have in their intros they'll just have them talking they'll have breaks in their talking and i feel like it just takes away from the actual quality of the video but with that being said we're actually going to start talking about mistake number two which I believe is the most overlooked mistake in terms of viewer engagement. And that's going to be your music and the vibe of your music, not exactly aligning with the flow or style of your video. So what I mean by this, and trust me, I've actually experienced my fair share of this on YouTube and I've had a lot of trouble with it, is not exactly having the right music aligning with my style of video. Obviously, you know me, I like to talk fast. I like to have almost like a positive voice tone when I'm talking. And I actually use lo-fi music, which didn't align with the style of my video at all. It's very like slow and obviously if my voice is fast and I have a positive tone, it doesn't really align and it just kind of throws the tone of the video off. This isn't something that I noticed immediately. It wasn't until I actually started watching my own videos to see what I could actually be doing better. That was one of the main things that I realized. I realized that it just seemed a bit awkward and I wanted to kind of learn about this and get better at it. So now I've kind of actually switched over to like a faster paced rap style of music. So the number one thing that I would recommend is research and take your time and feel out the type of video that you're actually making and try try to find a style of music that actually fits that. So for example, if you're doing a tutorial and it's more like a laid back kind of calm thing, by all means, you can use lo-fi music as long as you feel like it matches the tone of your video. But if you're doing some sort of voiceover and it's faster paced or even like a Fortnite gameplay or any sort of video game gameplay, I would recommend using like a hip hop style background music song. And then if you're doing like a comedy video, I would recommend using kind of background music that's more like upbeat and comedic, kind of like the music that C-Day uses or any other sort of comedy style YouTubers. But yeah, once you've actually identified the 
type of music that you feel works best with your video, you can actually come on over to your editing software and I'll show you how you can actually use this. So for example, you can come on over to where you've actually downloaded these songs. And then what you can do is you can drag it in. And the first main tip that I actually have to give you with the song itself is you're going to want to find the main beat drop of your song. So for me, it's actually going to be right here on the song. So I'm going to place a marker here. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to land this beat drop on wherever your hook ends. So for example, in all my intros, I have a part where I talk about the video itself, what I'm actually going to be doing in it. And then right after that, I start talking about kind of like an explanation. And I tell people to subscribe. So you'll actually want to hit your beat drop right after the part where you talk about your main video. So for me, that's going to be right about here. So I'm going to place a marker there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to align these two markers here. From there, I can just cut down the music to whatever length I want, lower the volume a bit. And just like that, item for your gaming setup, your gaming setup's gonna and just like that, the beat drop just actually adds so much more to the video without you even realizing. If you go and watch some of your favorite YouTubers, a lot of people actually do that without you even realizing. And something that I just noticed is just having music that matches the video will just lead to people watching a lot more without them even thinking about it for some strange reason. But now I'm actually going to be explaining the third and final mistake that a lot of people make, which is actually not having something for the viewers to watch while your video is playing through. So there's many different ways you can go about this being subtitles, pop-ups, video overlays. I'm going to be kind of describing all three of them. So obviously for subtitles, if you have your intro and you're talking, you can overlay just a text layer and you can kind of make the caption whatever you want, the subtitle. And a font that I always use is either Mont or I use Burbank and that's the Fortnite font if you guys don't know, but I'm going to be using Mont because it's my favorite subtitle font. You can change it to either I would recommend yellow, red, or white because those are researched to be the most appealing colors to the eyes in terms of kind of pop-ups and all that stuff. And then the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve, we can add stroke, which is just a mini outline. And then we can add things such as drop shadow, which will just add to the appearance itself. And then we can also change the positioning. And obviously as the video plays along, you'll change the subtitles to actually say different things, obviously because you're just going to be talking and you don't want it to just say one thing. But yeah, that's the first example. The second example is going to be some sort of pop-up. So if you want to add kind of a similar idea where you overlay a picture and you have it pop up on the screen when you say something like subscribe to my YouTube and you have like a YouTube button on the screen or something like that, that's an idea. And the third way that you can actually do this is through video overlays. So for example, in my setup essentials video that I recently posted on the channel, I actually incorporated this into the intro. So for example, I start the intro off by talking. I introduce the idea. And then what I do once I actually start talking about my setup, I use a transition to transition into some B-roll footage as well as a cinematic of my PC. And then I transition out of it once I start talking about subscribing to the channel and I actually incorporate a YouTube pop-up here, which is kind of a callback to the second aspect that I pointed out of this mistake. And I'm super satisfied with the way that this turns out. I feel like it just took my professionalism of this video to the next level. And that's obviously something that you're going to want to go for on your YouTube channel. But with that being said, that's actually going to wrap up the video. If you guys do enjoy, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Obviously, video engagement is something that no one will ever be able to master and everybody will be consistently learning about it. I'm always learning about it as I feel like a YouTuber's goal should be to just develop the quality of your YouTube videos and just take them to the next level video after video. But with that being said, make sure to support the channel if you guys did enjoy. I had a lot of fun making this video, but like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in a future video on the channel. Peace out.